Greetings, and welcome to African American Identity and Popular Culture Part 3. This is Part 3 of a three-part series on African American Identity and Popular Culture, which is part of a larger series on popular culture in the U.S. Uh, for a course, Popular Culture in the U.S. by Lance Eaton, taught at North Shore Community College. In this mini-lecture, we are going to take a look at really some examples uh, or, or just some images and examples of what's been discussed in the first two parts. Um, and so in doing so, I, I do have to give a warning that, especially in the next uh, f couple images, they're going to be extremely offensive and uncomfortable. Uh, they are, they, there's a lot of hard material to look at. Um, and you don't necessarily have to take a look at it. I'm just going to briefly take, a, you know, explain what it is. Um, and I understand that, you know, th this is this is powerful imagery, and I, this warning is is important to understand because it, you will see um, stereotype and racial depictions of African Americans, and then you're also going to see some very brutal imagery um, of African American bodies that have been lynched. All right, so first let's take a look at blackface minstrelsy. Um, here we have a variety of examples of blackface minstrelsy of uh, white Americans dressing up as African Americans, uh, painting their face, or, or dressing up as they perceive African Americans, painting their face black, and generally performing songs and dances and um, really trying to uh, make African American identity a bit ridiculous. We also have lynching souvenirs. Uh, these are pictures that were taken uh, by audiences who would attend a lynching. That, and uh, as we said before, lynching is typically the hanging of a person, followed uh, either preceded and or followed by the brutaliz brutalization of their body. And we typically, within American history, there was a lot of examples of the lynching of African Americans and souvenirs being taken, in this case pictures being taken, and these pictures being turned into postcards that were then sent to, to people as, you know, hey look what I did this weekend. Right, so lynching souvenirs, I mean you have to think about in the 1800s to take a picture it took a certain amount of time. You had to 1800s and 1900s, you know, it, it wasn't just like today we take a quick selfie or we take a quick snap with our phone. It was a setup. You would sometimes need, um, you know, uh, you would need to bring the camera, you would need to set it up, you would need to set the lighting potentially, you would need the flash and, and to, it, you would need the, the shutter speed to be to take upwards of a minute. So, and again, an image like this, here we have people lined up, all staring at the camera, and this isn't something that just happened quickly. They had to have been standing there preparing for this, um, and they are all looking at the camera. They know that the camera is there, and they're standing there with the bodies. Here again is another one, and, you know, look at how they're looking at the at the camera, right? They are not hiding themselves. They are not, you know, this isn't something that has just, you know, been taken while they weren't paying attention. This is something they are posing for. Look at their stances. Look at their body language. Here again, another one where people are standing and staring. People are, are looking at or in the direction of. And again, another one. So those are those are some very powerful images, and I think again it, it speaks to you know this was an activity that people did. It wasn't just you know they happened to be walking by, but they st they stayed long enough to take pictures with it, and that is can be very frightening when we think about the power of popular culture in both positive and negative ways. So. We're going to just move quickly into talking about or, or looking at white depictions of African Americans in film and radio. Uh, in the previous video, I talked a lot about Birth of a Nation. And again, you can see um, just this, you know, the, the imagery that abounds. Uh, I had also mentioned the jazz singer from 1927 and, and Al Jolson dressing up in blackface to perform songs. Um, King Kong in the depiction of this giant large ape character lusting after uh, these beautiful white women. Gone with the Wind um, in this you know be this, this story about you know the Civil War or the impact of the Civil War on people on the slave owners um, and somehow the slaves feeling like 
you know, they had good owners and now they're going to be left to fend for themselves. As I mentioned before, Amos and Andy in their depiction, um, you can see on the left people who, you can see on the left um, actual African American actors who eventually play Amos and Andy, but on the right uh, we can see characters who are in blackface. In 1965, um, Othello was made or was captured on film, and rather than actually casting a African American, Lawrence Olivier painted himself in blackface. In fact, you don't see a African, an African American or anybody of African descent playing Othello in a major film until the 1990s, when Lawrence Fishburne does it. Uh, you have Soul Man in 1986 where a, a white man decides he wants to get into college and the only way he can do that is to go in as a to paint himself black and to go in as an african-american because he has a better chance uh, because of things like a for a affirmative action 1992 you have the la uh, the la riots the rodney king riots and of course i mentioned in 94 you see the start of the oj simpson trial and then most recently, um, as I said before, you have Trayvon Martin, you have uh, Mike Brown, Eric Garner, um, a variety of people who, when they are killed, um, their stories are then represented often by others in mass media, in popular culture. And I think that's a very, you know, that we're still grappling with that, that we see this, this legacy um, of other people crafting stories of African Americans. Certainly there has been progress in a variety of ways and one of the films we look at this week, Bamboozled, is a great example of you know African Americans speaking to their experience but we still overwhelmingly see um, a lot of questionable representations of African Americans by whites or others within our culture. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.